LCT and South African higher education. What's the buzz about? In early 2021, Kirsten Wilmot and Sue McKenna got together to explore the uptake of LCT to look at a variety of issues in higher education research in South Africa. What we found was that there has been a general increase in higher education research in response to several drivers, including massification, where we now have a diversified student body and taken for granted practices are increasingly being criticized as ignoring the learning needs of a diverse student body. Parallel to these pressures is the emergence of the idea of the knowledge economy and how this has influenced how universities are understood in society. Increasingly, universities are being seen as a training ground for skilled graduates to contribute en masse to the workforce of the country, rather than as a place for nurturing scholarly individuals who can critically engage with abstract knowledge. Many higher education institutions are trying to respond to the resilience of their colonial heritage. Scholars and students working in higher education are calling for our normalized and common sense practices and ways of being to be scrutinized and transformed so that students achieve more than formal access to university and are also afforded epistemological access, that is, access to principled disciplinary knowledge as well as the associated dispositions and literacies in ways that do not only privilege a narrow way of knowing and a narrow set of knowledges. Teaching and learning research in South Africa is much the same as elsewhere in the world in that it is often characterized by a-theoretical studies which are also small scale and which generally fall into the descriptive category of show and tell papers. Without the help of powerful theory, the insights provided by these descriptive studies are often locked into a specific context and as such offer little transformative value for the broader field. Research on higher education tackles an array of topics, but over the last 10 years, scholars internationally and in South Africa have been building an argument that existing research on teaching and learning has overlooked an important consideration knowledge itself. Scholars point out that a focus on the kind of knowledge students are required to learn has been sidelined in favour of focusing on the structure of the curriculum or the processes of learning, and in effect knowledge as an object has been neglected, resulting in a curious knowledge blindness. To avoid this dilemma, scholars in recent years have been engaging with issues of teaching and learning using a social realist understanding and adopting a range of analytical tools and substantive theories to consider knowledge and knowledge practices. For example, Bernstein's theory has provided powerful tools for looking at the nature of disciplinary knowledge, as well as the differences between knowledge production, recontextualization and reproduction. Bernstein's work is particularly useful because it encourages empirical exploration of how education can both replicate and disrupt the social order. And in a post-apartheid South Africa, there has been a particular desire to make sense of the role education plays in reproducing social inequalities. Similarly, the research drawing on new literacy studies has pointed to the different kinds of knowledge practices and associated identities required of students as they become recognized members of different disciplines. While such studies highlight the power of such tacit practices, they do not explain how these practices emerge or why they differ. LCT is able to build on the foundational work of theorists like Bernstein and Bourdieu and take into account the identity focus of new literacy studies. LCT is a theoretical framework offering a conceptual toolkit and analytical methodology that asks the important question, why is it that certain knowledges are legitimated and others are not? And also, how is it that each discipline structures its knowledge and determines the kind of knower deemed worthy of disciplinary membership? It provides a realist understanding that acknowledges the social character of knowledge. To have a look at the relatively quick uptake of LCT in higher education research in South Africa, 
We got together to have a look at publications from 2010 to 2020. We limited our search to higher education research authored by South African scholars. We only considered chapters in books and peer-reviewed journal articles. We excluded conference presentations and all postgraduate theses, of which there were a great many. Since 2010, there have been 86 peer-reviewed publications by South African authors using LCT to address research issues in higher education, with just four publications in 2010, increasing to 19 publications in 2020. What is interesting to note is that the dissemination of knowledge is not limited to a South African audience. Most of the articles were in international journals. The geographical distribution of the research suggests a relevance for a broader readership. And by implication, this shows that this growing body of research can overcome the context dependent show and tell limitations of much past research on teaching and learning. There is clearly a buzz about LCT and that buzz is global. To illustrate just how useful this theory is, we will now briefly describe two LCT dimensions and briefly give an overview of four case studies that use these tools. In South African higher education studies, specialization and semantics have been the most used dimensions. In brief, specialization allows us to identify the basis on which any practice is specialized or distinct and it's premised on the simple notion that everything we do is oriented towards an object and is enacted by a person. So in this sense, all knowledge and practices are said to involve relations to both objects and subjects, and based on this understanding, any analysis of knowledge needs to consider two aspects. It needs to consider the relationship to the object of study known as epistemic relations, as well as the relationship between knowledge and the people who are considered legitimate producers or users of that knowledge, known as social relations. Specialization can reveal what is considered legitimate knowledge in any given context at a particular point in time, as well as who can be considered a legitimate knower in any given field. This can give us insights into the often taken for granted aspects of teaching and learning, such as what kind of knowledge is legitimated, what value systems are espoused, the kinds of ideal dispositions students should acquire, and how these aspects shift over time. Several South African scholars have used concepts from specialization to explore a range of issues in teaching and learning. One example is Karen Ellery, who in this 2018 publication looked at a science program at a South African university to understand what was needed to enable success in the discipline. Using these tools, Karen was able to distinguish two different but concurrent learning processes. First, the acquisition of principled scientific knowledge and procedures, and second, a particular kind of disposition or way of being that students needed to embody to gain access to powerful knowledge. By making these two aspects explicit, Karen was able to challenge the dominant view of science as being a collection of neutral facts about the natural world, which students came to know through objective inquiry, and she was able to show that key to student success were the dispositions, values and literacies a student has to acquire, that is, the social aspects of scientific knowledge. So from a social justice perspective, Karen was able to show how social aspects forms part of the hidden curriculum and could become a gatekeeper to success. Another example of research using specialization was a study by Luck, McKenna and Harren. They looked at the relationship between industry expectations and the curriculum for public management. They found that the curriculum was focused significantly on knowledge, skills and processes with very little attention being paid to cultivating students' dispositions. During apartheid, public administration was focused on controlling citizens and ensuring that various bureaucratic state requirements were effectively managed. 
In post-apartheid South Africa, there were calls for the public management sector to play a particular role in shifting the callous apartheid system of administration to one focused on service delivery by compassionate and critical individuals. What they study using the specialization tools showed, however, was that while the content of the public management curriculum had changed extensively in the new democracy, the basis of success remained on acquiring a set of fairly technical facts and skills rather than taking on a disposition of service. So the study showed a code clash between what was valued in the formal curriculum and that which was being demanded by the field. The second dimension of LCT that is used a lot in South African higher education research is semantics, and this dimension offers a different set of tools to reveal the forms that knowledge takes and how this impacts on the basis of success. In brief, semantics explores the context dependence and complexity of practices, and these two concerns are conceptualized as semantic gravity and semantic density. So semantic gravity refers to the degree to which meaning relates only to a particular context or more broadly. Semantic density, on the other hand, relates to the complexity of meanings. So the stronger the semantic density, the more complex the meanings, typically as a result of condensing many meanings into instances of practice. Scholars have taken up these concepts to explore a range of teaching and learning issues in higher education. For example, it has been proven to be a particularly valuable tool for looking at pedagogic practice and curricula that encourage and enable cumulative learning. And one of its key affordances is that it is able to analyse data at varying levels of detail. So for example, at a meso level, Sharon Clarence in 2016 used these concepts to unpack political science classroom pedagogy. Sharon was then able to use her analysis for staff development by showing lecturers how a central component of constructing arguments in political science is applying theoretical concepts to varying social historical contexts. In effect, what was being required of students was for them to be able to apply theory to real world examples. Using her analysis, Sharon engaged lecturers in conversation about the kinds of concepts and real-world applications that are valued in their courses and how they could make these more explicit to students. Working at a more micro level, focusing on one assessment task, Ilza rutman Lohanji and Max Blackie in 2020 used the semantics tools to analyse a chemistry assessment in an introductory health science course. They were able to show how success in the assessment lay in students' ability to shift between abstract, highly condensed meanings and relatively context-dependent simple meanings. What was really important was that the analysis helped them to understand that the task design was not well suited to assess the learning outcomes. The analysis enabled the authors to better understand the basis of success of the assessment task and offered insights into how such tasks could be more effectively designed in future to encourage the development of cumulative learning. As these snapshots of research illustrate, one of the most coveted aspects of using LCT as a theoretical framework and analytical tool is that it is able to be used at varying degrees of detail to understand knowledge practices. It can also be enacted in any field where there is a need to understand how knowledge works. In South Africa alone, the diversity of application of the theory is considerable, including for higher education research in academic development, African philosophies, biology, chemistry, doctoral writing, engineering, English literature, higher education studies, journalism, marketing, physics, law, supervision practices, science foundation programs, sociology, teacher education, theology, work integrated learning, to name a few. So that's the buzz in the LCT publications we looked at. What's the buzz in yours?